In this video, we start the drywall, and that's coming up next. How's it going? My name is Brian. I'd like to welcome you to another video. On this channel, we do how-to videos, product reviews, brew days, and right now we are building the brewery in the basement of the new house, and we finally made it to a point where I can start hanging drywall. I am so excited. This is actually, to be honest with you, this is the first time that I've ever done this scope of a project and this scale. I know it's not huge, but it's just know that I'm going to get it done and it's going to be finished and it's going to be awesome. It's just, it's, it's so, I mean, it's just exhilarating. I, I'm, I'm thinking about it all the time. <laughs> Kelly could probably tell you. So with that, let me show you what I've got done so far and let's take a look. All right. Let me step back here and show you. So if you notice, got these blocks along the wall here, you'll see what those are gonna be for uh, coming up. Those blocks right there are for a TV mount. Control panel is gonna go there and there's a block for it to mount to. Um, here is the kettle sink. Um, got the plumbing roughed in over here. Got all my protectors on, as I told you in the last video, all the protectors got those on. One other thing that I wanted to kind of touch base on too, and, and I've not been really good at this in the past is cleaning up as I go along. I'm trying to do better with that. And I tell you, it's really, it, it is really very refreshing. I'm enjoying doing it because when you like pick everything up, clean everything up, you can kind of get a fresh perspective and see what's going on and what you need to do and what's left. Anyhow, let me get the drywall. Right. A couple of things. There's some tools that I recommend for doing drywall and I'm no expert. So if you are a drywall expert, please leave a comment down below if you see me doing something that you can do easier. I won't see it, but somebody watching the video might look at the comments and see it. So these are absolutely awesome for carrying drywall, which brings me to another point. If you can have somebody help you carry your drywall, do it. <laughs> go ahead and buy a great big pack of razor blades because you're gonna go through them like water. T-square. Uh, it's actually, yeah, T-square, drywall T-square. Anybody that does drywall can attest that these things are awesome. They're a godsend. Drywall saw. Premium for me is one of these, uh, it's like an oscillating or reciprocating cutters. They do a great job of cutting out like square holes for your outlets and all that kind of stuff. It's a nice, straight, clean cut that has almost no paper frayed around or anything like that. So, and you want to make sure you raise all your drywall up like a, at least a half inch up off the floor because it will wick up moisture. And especially in the brewery area, uh, definitely want to have a half inch between the drywall and the floor. If you have round items, drains, uh, drain and the, the feed lines are, use a hole saw. I mean, you know, come on, use a hole saw, make it nice. One more tool. This is a rasp combination lift. So you can put this underneath of the drywall, set your drywall on here by the wall, and then you step on it and it'll actually lift your drywall up off the floor so you can get that spacing that you're looking for. It also has a rasp on it because if you cut drywall, a lot of times it'll leave a lot of really jaggedy edge stuff. Give it a couple little hits on there. Boom, smooth. And at the end of the day, it has a bottle opener on it. <laughs> so get yourself a couple of tools like I'm showing you here. It's gonna make your job a lot easier and you'll have a lot better finished product too because you won't be pulling your hair out. So now we're gonna get to it. So. Looks like actually if I raise it up some it should allow for a little bit more so let's get that done. Now see this is pretty much why I hate drywall. <laughs> it's because the building is never square and nothing is ever exactly where you measure it so you always have to do a little bit of something to make it work but anyways I'm gonna keep going, persevere, I got the piece in at least 
got it pretty well fitted up there. Got a couple screws in, so everything's fitting for the most part. So there's the first piece, so let's keep going. Let's take a look at, and I don't know how much you know about doing drywall or whatever. I don't know very much, so like I said earlier, leave a comment down below if you've got tips because I won't see them, but maybe somebody else will and help them out. But I'm gonna show you how you can like cut drywall either to length or to width on the whole item. And I'll show you how to do that now. All right, so I've got a whole piece of drywall here and I'm actually putting it up on this space above this piece of drywall here. So I need to cut off some of this piece of drywall in order for it to fit because the ceiling is not a full eight feet high. So um, I've got a mark here at uh, 43 and a quarter and I've marked on the drywall here. Now you can pop a chalk line all the way down and try to follow it with your knife. Um, you can do this with the T-square, cut one half and then turn around and come back and cut the other half. I find that this kind of tedious because this thing wants to move like this all the time while you're doing that. One of the things you can do that's pretty easy to do is use your T-square as kind of like a slide rule, if you will, and just put your, put your knife on the mark and then just start sliding down. So go all the way to the end. And then you've got your cut. And then you come back to the end up here and just finish it out. Next. You notice I didn't cut all the way through, but what you can do is all you gotta do is just give it a quick little tap with your hand, and then that comes off. And then you reach up underneath here, and you find the, the corner there, and then you just go through and cut it on the back side. Make sure you cut all the way through, obviously. Like I didn't do all the simple spots there. And then your piece is trimmed out and ready for me to cut the holes for the plugs and the, the light socket there. So that's how you do that. All right, wanted to give you guys a real quick tip. If you run into a situation where, like what I've done here, I have my wall kind of in the wrong place, my stud here. And so when I put my drywall in, if I put a piece in there, you can kind of see there's not really any room to put a screw in there. So all you have to do really in that situation is just screw or tack a board onto there and then you'll have plenty of place to put you some screws at. All right, next day, and sorry, unfortunately I didn't film as much as I thought I was going to. I just was in a roll and I just kept going and going and going. So I've got a couple more pieces of drywall to put in before I'm completely done and then I'll show you everything. So with a compound cut like this, where we got like an L-shaped cut, we'll have to cut through all the way through the drywall on one of the spots. So we'll pick the shortest spot to do it on. And basically it's just a matter of going multiple times over the same spot and you just keep going. Try not to put too much downforce on it, but you can, you can definitely uh, ruin the drywall and cause it to break in the middle, especially whenever you're cutting this much out of it, the side of it. So we'll, Cut this all the way through. Yeah, that. And voila. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it fits good. We'll find out how good our measurements are. And I'll tell you what, that looks very good. Peace, ladies and gentlemen let me get this fastened up and then I'll show you what all we did all right so the last piece of drywall is in and thank goodness I'm done with hanging the drywall now I do have the somewhat daunting task of doing the mud work on the drywall but I'm going to show you how I'm going to avert or avoid most of that and I guess some people might call it cheating but you know what I just call it planning so let's take a look and I'll show you what I'm talking about all right so just a quick Quick overview of what all is going on. I've got the green sheetrock over there for the wet area. Got the rest of the 
basement pretty much sheetrock, drywall's hung, everything's done there. The circuit breaker closet is enclosed, got that all done. Lights are all cut in, everything like that. Um, over here, uh, you might see this extra piece of drywall there. I had a mess up moment, and some of that's probably karma for me talking about, do it professional, be, you know, do this, cut a hole in it. And uh, the hole was off. So what I did with that was I just marked a piece of drywall, then uh, used my square to cut the sides, then cut the piece of drywall down to length, placed it over top of the pipe nipple there and uh, marked it and then drilled a hole through it and then reinstalled it back in there. But as you can see, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty smooth for what type of finish I'm gonna be putting over here. I'm not gonna be painting that. I'm gonna be doing something different with that and you guys will see that coming up, so. And this patch actually gives me one more thing to show you with tools that help you with the drywall situation. There is this bit right here. Now let me see if I can get it to focus on it. And what happens with it is when you drive it in, it goes all the way to this shank and then stops. And then basically it leaves you with a small indentation that, will, that you can fill right over with uh, your spackling compound or your drywall mud. And then uh, it has a nice little dish there so you're not having stuff pop out and that gives you a little more surface area to cover the screw with. Now onto the uh, lack of drywall mud. <laughs> um, everywhere that there is, like this is not necessarily a seam, but right there I'm gonna put a column and I'm just gonna put like a three quarter inch piece of oak up there. And then all the way along here, along this line, and you can see how that line is over there as well. And not here, but same thing with this is there's gonna be another column right here, another column right here. My corners, of course, they'll be finished, but that there's gonna be a, a three and a half inch piece of oak running around that entire 42 inch height. Probably have a little piece running over here into the brewery area. And then on that, I'm actually going to put a shelf on that. So we'll have a, a, a glass rail all the way around for you to set a glass on or whatever, because we have arcade machine over here. And then of course, I'm making it the same height as what the bar is. So that's pretty much all of the drywall done. It is looking great. So I'm gonna be painting the top portion of the wall and then the bottom portion I'm gonna be doing wood um, with the chair right across there and then I'll do some some molding uh, to finish it out and then it'll be there'll be a piece of wood paneling in there as well so um, the whole bottom of the bar and brewery is going to be like a wood look to it really excited to get going i think the next step is going to be actually framing the bar in and then that'll be kind of showing you'll kind of get to see how the bar is going to be shaped and how big it's going to be and all that stuff so that'll be coming up next time this has been brian for short circuit of brewers if you like the video give us a thumbs up we appreciate your support we'll see you on the next video